Shalom. Uh, I'm Rabbi Arthur Watsko, director of the Shalom Center, and I'm uh, doing the weekly Dvar Torah comment on the Torah passage uh, that uh, I've been in the habit of doing for a while. So rather than pick this week's Torah portion, I'm responding to events in the world. We're in the first ever second in, uh, in I want to say indictment, in effect indictment, uh, impeachment of a president of the United States. The first ever uh, one president has been impeached twice and we're in the middle of the trial. And what occurred to me was to uh, draw on a passage in Deuteronomy 17 that's called the Perikamela, the passage on the king. It's a, uh, a report of what the dangers are that a king might overreach and uh, turn himself into a pharaoh and how to prevent it, what the rules are. Uh, for example, one of the rules is he can't uh, create a standing army of horse chariots, which were the most expensive and the most imperial uh, of all the weapon systems available 3,000 years ago. So Egypt had an army of uh, uh, horse chariots, um, and, and he wasn't allowed to do that. And he wasn't allowed to send the people that back into Mitzrayim, the tight and narrow space of slavery, in order to pay for uh, an army of horse chariots to act as if he were an emperor of an empire instead of a, a king of a close knit people. He wasn't allowed to pile up his own money. And he wasn't allowed to pile up lots of sexual uh, conquests either. Uh, but all those, the Torah says, would turn his heart away from serving the people. So then comes the question, how are you going to enforce this? In the US Constitution, the way of trying to enforce it is uh, through impeachment. Um, in the Torah, it said that the uh, King had to meet with the priests uh, and go over uh, again and again and again the rules of the Torah, especially the rules of, of controlling his possible overreach and the rules of what the obligations were of the society to the poor. Those were the crucial things. And he had to learn them. Uh, in fact, he had to actually write them out in his own hand, by his own hand, uh, in order to absorb them. So here we are. Uh, we have a moment when the king, who has decided that he does want to be a pharaoh, refuses to accept the results of an election uh, says over and over and over and over again, the election was invalid because it was uh, rigged. Uh, he calls for a uh, major demonstration in Washington, DC. He says that on uh, Twitter uh, around the country several times. Um, he even says, it's going to be a wild event. Come, come. So people came. And then he whipped up their energy and channeled it into becoming a wild event to try to stop the congressional uh, actions according to the Constitution uh, and the law that would have ratified the real election. There was no evidence whatever that it had been rigged or uh, a fraud. Uh, more than 60 court cases 
that his supporters brought were unable to produce any evidence at all that there was fraud. It was all just his insistence and his hope that by whipping up that kind of energy, it would be some way in which somehow he would be installed as president again. So he was impeached for uh, inciting an insurrectionary riot, which uh, battled its way, fought its way into the Capitol itself, uh, terrorized members of Congress, chanted death to the Vice President of the United States because he wouldn't do the President's bidding about this, uh, death to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, erected a gallows on the uh, Capitol grounds, uh, killed one policeman, uh, hurt a whole bunch of policemen trying to defend the Capitol, uh, some of them very seriously. Uh, and we begin the impeachment trial, again at this past week, with a video of what had actually happened. The video is horrifying. Most, much of it not, not previously publicly revealed. Hearing uh, chance to kill leaders of Congress uh, who wouldn't do the president's bidding. Uh, we hearing chance, obscene chance aimed at the police. Uh, so all that, the worst of America, bloodshed, bloodshed to create bloodshed, bloodshed, uh, anti-democratic rioting to, to install an anti-democratic regime. Uh, you ever ask whether the means fit the ends? Yes, they did. Uh, the goal was to end American democracy and the means were to prevent Congress from acting democratically and the means were violent to do that. And then, so that's one version of America. The version that's racist, the Confederate flag, the flag of, uh, of Slovakracy, the flag of the slave regime of the so-called Confederate States of America uh, was carried uh, a rebel flag, uh, an enslavement flag was carried into the Capitol by some of the rioters. Uh, and the whole tone and rhetoric of the riot was racist. It was all built around, in fact, the notion that somehow the votes of certain big cities like Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, like Milwaukee and Wisconsin, that had large black populations didn't count. Why not? Because they were black people voting. And the president himself and those supporters were perfectly willing to uh, take the view that black votes didn't count. The president's mobilizing these violent militias was the equivalent in our society, at least the first stage of uh, a horse chariot army. Um, not terribly expensive. They came at the president's call, but it was his, his way of mobilizing violence against the people, which is what the Torah says the, president, the king should never do. And then there was the exemplar of the other America. In this case, a uh, member of Congress named Jamie Raskin, who was the chief uh, manager for the 
house uh, claim of impeachment um, and who presented himself and who is uh, a constitutional lawyer, taught constitutional law uh, at a university who uh, appealed to, worked hard to make contact with the uh, people of a district in Maryland, uh, won their respect, their admiration, their love. They elected him and re-elected him uh, to Congress. And in Congress, he won people's respect and uh, the kind of leadership and thoughtfulness he brought um, won him the honor of being the lead manager for the impeachment. And he also had a family and he didn't sacrifice the Republic for his family or his family for the Republic. He held both as a deep value. Uh, his son, bright, brilliant, and shadowed by dark, dark uh, depression and despair on December 31st, the last day of this year of death and horror and depression and despair in American society, uh, wrote a note saying, the disease of depression that had haunted him for years, the disease has won today and killed himself. Uh, and that was only days before uh, the attack on the Capitol. Um, and his funeral was actually the very day before. And Congressman Baskin brought two members of his family to see the Congress validate the election, the presidential election, uh, in order to give them a sense of hope and good cheer for the future, despite the death of their family member. And Instead, they were confronted by violent, rampaging mob threatening the lives of leaders of Congress, uh, threatening them so that they had to hide. In the capital of the United States, they had to hide from some of the raging mob made up of some of the people of the United States who had been incited uh, to action by their president, to violence by their president. So Jamie Raskin was able to unite feeling to intellect. Sometimes we think they're divorced, cold intellect, the cold facts and hot or warm feelings. But what he, was able to bring was warm facts uh, with passion and with tears, not with blood, but with tears. Tears for the terror imposed on his family members, tears for America. The terror being imposed on the democratic process a politician, amazing, who wasn't afraid to cry. So it may be that impeachment is not a sufficient way of enforcing the Constitution that we have any more than uh, having to meet with the Priest was a way of enforcing the ancient constitution of the Israelite people. 
uh, when their king decided, as some of their kings did, mm -hmm. to be tyrants. We're taught that the struggle comes over and over and over again. By reading the efforts of 3,000 years ago and reading and watching with our own eyes the news of today, we're taught again and again and again how hard it is, how necessary it is to carry on the struggle against the desire of some human beings to lord it over others, to be pharaoh over others. How urgent and important it is, and again and again, to recreate democracy. Even when some of our institutions uh, were set up so that the result was anti-democratic. The Electoral College is an anti-democratic institution. The Senate is, and the filibuster makes it worse, uh, giving a minority of a minority uh, the power to act as if it were a majority of the people or the representatives of the majority. When we have a Supreme Court that for uh, more than a decade has, first of all, said that wealth is totally legitimate, wealth of any kind, any amount, totally legitimate in election campaigns, so that elections should become auctions, not really elections of the will of the people. And a Supreme Court that takes the heart and gut out of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Um, and a Supreme Court that says that partisan gerrymandering is too complicated uh, to forbid. So we start with an inherited system that was not originally set up to be democratic. Only white men who held property were the first voters in American society, only them. We have won stage by stage by stage. We have won ourselves closer to an inclusive democracy and it took struggle to do it. And it will take struggle to reinforce, strengthen, renew, and reinvent what democracy means. Not only America, that's to say, Americans have such power in the planet that it's the entire planet and all life forms, a million species, maybe including our own, that are at stake and in danger of extinction. The carbon pharaohs of today bring plague on the earth, just as the ancient story of the ancient pharaoh tells. Coronavirus, one of those plagues made far worse by the way in which several governments, including the American government, tried to pretend at first, and our own government, not just at first, but over and over and over again, uh, even so a month ago, uh, that it was not important. So it got worse because nobody was treating it as important. So there's a lot of stake here. Not only the future of America, but the future of the planet. A lot of stake. And we need to learn that 3,000 years 
only teaches us that we have to struggle again and again to keep the will of the people paramount and to prevent even our leaders from turning into failure. So, Torah and action are not opposites. The study of Torah, one of the great rabbis said, was crucial if it led to action. And that's what we need to be doing in this generation, these times. Be well, everybody. Stay well, truly. Zaygazun, not a formula, but an important statement of the truth that we need to be caring in order to stay well. And uh, shalom, peace and wholeness uh, be with you uh, as we navigate this difficult journey that we're in. Shalom, this is Arthur Wasco from the Shalom Center. Our website is the T-H-E, the Shalom Center dot org. And there you can find uh, a treasury of thought and a treasury of action and a guide to how to uh, get our thoughts uh, from week to week to week to week. Be well and so on.